بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد We are here today, Friday, the 2nd of October with Brother Umar Jamiki who is a graduate from the Faculty of Hadith in Medina University in Saudi Arabia we would like to discuss some issues that were raised in a lecture that was taking place over the last week in a talk given by a brother Abdulillahi Lahmani, who is an English teacher travelling between Saudi Arabia and the UK. In the later parts of his lecture, he raised a number of points and a number of issues in regards to Brixton Masjid, which we believe that there should be some clarity brought to you. <coughs> so, in regards to that, first I'd like to give you salams. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Wa ask you, are you familiar with this brother, Lahmani? As for myself personally, I don't know the person that I've, uh, you have mentioned, but uh, it has come to my attention that uh, uh, you have given this particular lecture and uh, discussed certain matters about Brixton, and we think that you know it's best to have this discussion in trying to clarify some of those matters. Now, Jay, of one of the points raised by Brother Lahmani was that he used to teach and give lessons in Brixton Masjid or give khutbah in Brixton Masjid. Is this the case? Uh, as for lesson, I don't think that's the case regarding lesson, but I think may, may, uh, what I've been uh, informed that uh, he have uh, given uh, a few lectures or uh, khutbah in the masjid and uh, from his last khutbah, due to the content of that khutbah and uh, what was said and what was done, that uh, the masjid somewhat have never invited him back to the masjid. So we can somewhat have, uh, you know, let that be the last uh, opportunity that he had to uh, speak in the masjid. So we left him. <laughs> The first question that I'd like to ask you, uh, Brother Omar, does Brixton administration have a policy of referring all of their affairs back to the Jordanian Mashaykh, as alleged by Brother Lahmani? Uh, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salat wa salam ar Rasulillah, wa la alihi wa sahabihi, wa man tamasak bi sunnatihi ila yawm din amma bad. As for this question that you pose regarding uh, what was put forward by this brother, uh, Hadahullah, regarding uh, Brixton Masjid having a policy that all their affairs is refer back to the Mashaykh from Urdin that we say that one regarding this matter that uh, this one is a uh, absolute lie and that has never been the policy of Brixton Masjid never in the past nor at present and inshallah ta'ala hopefully not to be and also we live to the extent that will and we'll advise any Masjid of the people of Sunnah and Salafiyah that to never make it a policy that all your affairs go back to a single group of Mashaykh but you should take from the pool of the ulama that are there, that are wide, and that you benefit from them in the best way possible. But as for restricting yourself to five or four or three individuals and rejecting others and not per se taking aboard the what has been uh, the benefit of others, then that's not the way of the Salaf, and that's not the way of the Afda Imma. So anyone will uh, adopt this policy, then they are upon a way which is of a way of misguidance and incorrect. Question number two is, what is the history behind the allegation of Brixton Masjid administration returning all of their fears back to the Jordanian Mashaykh? Can you elaborate on this? As for this uh, allegation that has been made by that particular uh, brother and maybe others regarding uh, Brixton Masjid taking all their fears and issues back to, uh, to the Jordanians, we say one, can you furnish us with just one example to so the history of the 25 e years history or 15, one example at all uh, that we do refer all our affairs back to these uh, Mashaykh. But as for this, I think that uh, this particular matter, what he's uh, in, uh, speaking of, is regarding a uh, an agreement or 
between the various uh, maraqis of the brothers who were upon the Salafi Dawah where they came to some agreement regarding referring back and of that agreement of referring their matters back to the Mashaykh from Uruton. Well, in, in, in particular, two particular individuals, Sheikh uh, Salim Hilali and also Sheikh Ali Al-Hassan. Uh, that then, uh, so that was the agreement that was signed by all Brixton, Luton, Birmingham and others. Eventually some changed or some that and that particular uh, agreement was not per se of old now but the general initial there was agreement is not a, that and that agreement regarding was something that was put forward by Brixton it was something that was agreed upon by the person who uh, dealt with the matter right and all agreed to it and as for Brixton being so that was the reason of this so-called allegation regarding Brixton uh, with this matter so that matter was reviewed by some of the Mashiach regarding uh, this agreement and uh, but Bricks and Av never per se of all this that all the affairs return to particular individuals that's not been the case was this agreement uh, authenticated or signed off by any of the Mashiach at the time as for myself Omar Jamaiki I was not per se a part of that particular uh, agreement or contract between uh, those brothers then but from what I have seen from of the a copy of it that yes you have of the Mashiach who did sign to it and his signature is there and if one wish to ask then the person can ask the people involved in this or directly involved and may overhear that conversation and uh, whatever uh, discussion took place then it would be appropriate to ask those people involved regarding what actually did take place and concerning if the signature is there then who's you know the signature speak for itself Question number three. Why doesn't Brixton Mashi clarify their position on all of the Mashiach that have come to the UK and subsequently have been criticised by the scholars Maghwari, Adnan Uroor, Ali Al Halabi, Abu Al Hassan Al Marubi? Doesn't the community have a right to know, as suggested by Lahmami? Okay, this particular matter regarding that uh, Brixton clarifying regarding uh, some of the Mashiach who have been criticised. Uh, yes, there's a matter that you know, many of us regarding what's the position of Brixton Masjid regarding this. Since I've been present at Brixton Masjid, then of the things concerning that when this matter came to light, or I got involved, of, and also those who preceded me, that the, the line of procedure regarding that, as instructed by Allah Fasalu Ahli Zikr, that the Masjid then, and those who are in charge of the Masjid, in, uh, the administration of the Masjid, that they refer back the Masjid to the Masjid who were not directly involved as to what position or what is to be said or not to be said and uh, even myself since being present that we have taken that same line the Mashiach that we have access to and the ones who have visited us that we have asked him these matters are being discussed are we to speak are we to offer bayan are we to do this what to do that advise us regarding how to function and that's what we've been instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have asked and the majority of those who we have spoken to and most of those we have listened to and heard that they have given the, the, the um, that they have given um, they, have, they have given us instruction and what we understand from them that we are not to get involved in these affairs and that we are not to busy the people with these matters and rather we should try to be, uh, busy the people concerning learning, learning the usul of the sunnah and the akhid of, uh, of the salaf so these are the things that we are instructed and if we ask the people of knowledge shouldn't we not take the advice so those who criticize us, mm. have we done anything wrong by returning their fears to ulama and the tulabul ilm that we know of, and even to the extent that on many occasions when the Mashiach have visited Brixton Masjid, that we ask them these questions publicly, not in, in private, yes, but also publicly. These are the things that are, in, this is the matter that people are asking, what should be the position taken? And they'll tell us, leave this. And if you were to look at many of the statements concerning since this matter of come to light or uh, being discussed for the last 15 years, what have been the general advice of the likes of Sheikh Fawzan, Sheikh Abdelaziz Ali Sheikh, 
شيخ محسن اباد شيخ عبد شيخ عبد الكريم الخدير not telling the people that these affairs you are not to busy yourself with these matters but rather to busy yourself with learning the usul of Islam especially people in the West so that's concerning that matter regarding those mashaykh and we long kind of somewhat elaborate on says, as for the matter concerning uh, Sheikh Ali Hassan that they more connect us with this individual now regarding Sheikh Ali Hassan Al-Halabi who as we know is one of the tulab of Sheikh Albani rahimahullah so and also the masjid and England and the West have had a relationship with them in the past regarding him being invited to come over and to teach the people not just Brixton but most of the Marakat um, uh, the uh, Marakat is Salafi in England and in the West then at some point that he was criticized and then we took upon ourselves to look at the matter and we did we did add to regarding what's the position what is the stance how we should move forward regarding this matter so when that matter came to light by those of the Mashiach who criticized him there are few in number who put forward certain criticism regarding certain things that he were that he was accused of so then we look to see what was said by those who accused him or criticized him of certain things and also try to verify concern and then we also look to see what he himself responded to those criticism put against him and also added to this we also look to see what have been said by those mashaykh who are not involved regarding what was their position what the, the, what was their take on the issue in a nutshell yes there are those who criticize him and still does yes also there are those who have been asked about his matters regarding those criticism and what should be the position of him and their conclusion that they do not seem as a person that have written that is to be called a mubtada and they still believe the person that you can benefit from and we I think Brixton in general are more inclined to the view that the person Sheikh Ali Hassan Al Halabi Allah that is still a person that whatever criticism that we don't see that that what have been put forward as evidence based upon it being, it being a critiqued by other of the ulama that those who say that this evidence have been provided that it is not to the extent that doesn't warrant for him to be labeled as a mubtadi and that he cannot be benefited from and there are those concerning who have taken that line concerning the likes of Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Abad also the likes of Sheikh Wasiullah Abbas also of those ulama of the past who have died recently also who have spoke about this matter and it's concerned there this concern that uh, uh, Sheikh Hamdi Abdul Majid as Salafi one of the ulama of Iraq who died a couple of years ago was known to be a muhaqqiq a muhaddith and have many books at Tabarani Al Kabir Al Mojma Tabarani Al Kabir and many books that he have made taqiq that most of the people may not be aware of but of those people look I'll say any of many others but at the end of the day that concern it you not know, are we guilty to see what have been said by those who have spoken about the matter then come to a conclusion we may not believe so for us has never been for us a policy that try to create confusion about the shabab try more to gear them or direct them towards learning Islam and those matters if you need not to get too involved then do not based upon how we have seen how this matter can affect many so that's concerning that matter regarding those mashaykh we believe that we follow the ulama as Imam Ahmed Rahim as I've said regarding these matters we're not people who believe that we are people who can come to a final conclusion Sheikh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah Rahimullah in his book Al-Wasatiyah he mentioned concerning as well those who have explained concerning of the matter that we have to be very careful of especially amongst the Salafis and the Muslim in general these matters concerning Tabdiyah Tafsiq what Takfir is a fitna today and the Salaf have given us clear guidelines regarding these matters and the Ulama who follow the way of the Salaf I've also follow strict guidelines regarding these matters because these matters all I mentioned concerning these are matters concerning asma ad-deen wa ahkam meaning concerning hukum regarding saying a person is a Muslim the person is a kafir is a mu'min is a fasik their rules these hukum go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is a matter which is sharia 
not a matter it goes back to the personality of this individual or that individual it goes back to concerning putting a label on a person to say that a person is such and such and these matters go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding the ahkam that he has laid down subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Rasul alayhi wa so these matters that the ulama of all setting up the person concerned not to be mutajil don't be hasty to pass hukum upon others yes there's cases that some people may be that it may be justified that hukum of these types are past an individual who are deserving but there's guidelines the one who wish to pass those who come upon others we have to look concerned the person is he qualified we have to look to see the concern the thing that is being the person being accused of are those things actually things that he has said or done and propagate so there's rules and guidelines so we ask our brothers all of us not just Brixton Masjid but those who affiliate to this noble Dawah of Dawah Salafiyah don't be hasty don't busy people who are very new to Islam about matters that requires a person who's well grounded regarding matters of Islam Could it be considered a disparagement of the other Mashiach who taken a po an opposite view on those individuals mentioned uh, if Brixton <coughs> or yourself to take a view opposite to them is that a disparagement or a turn upon those Mashiach that's the short east of Islam you know for the Sahaba that difference did occur the usul of Islam the Sahaba didn't have any difference nor did the ulama of the Salaf and even of ulama of Kandwat there are sometimes issues or certain masahil where there are differences even sometimes concerning who come upon ashkas so amongst the Salaf and Dawah to Salafiyah as a principle Nam that regard concerning Tahdir min Ali Bida is there Hajar Ali Bida is there that's of the usul of the Dawah to preserve the purity of Islam the Prophet uh, based concerns the Prophet uh, the, the Hadith of Prophet concerns uh, Man amil amana lisa amil amurra fa huwa rad so preserving the purity of Islam is there the, pro the, the issue is concerning that in passing judgment or a hukum upon a particular individual sometimes you may have difference between the ulama and we can draw, we can cite example of contemporary times Sheikh bin Baz and others of the Mashaykh all concerning Muammar Qaddafi is a kafir but Sheikh Albani did not per se take to that view and maybe others so concerning passing hukum you may find sometimes difference between the ulama matter concerning the niqab matter concerning tariq salat matter concerning qiraat al-fatiha lil ma'mum the person behind so if I was to take the position that reading of Fatiha is wajib for everyone am I to condemn the person who say it is not and to say that your Salat is totally invalid and you are again against the ulama and disrespectful to the ulama no so I said in a nutshell that bricks and masjid we have respect for the ulama of the sunnah in some matters we will find difference between the ulama and we may take a view that means we align to one view and may not per se take to another but that should never be taken in any way to be in any form or way a disrespect to anyone and anyone who makes such claim then they need to review concerning you know what's in your heart what are you trying to achieve Um, question number four is that Lahmami accused you of keeping your community upon misguidance due to you not clarifying the situation of the aforementioned individuals. Do you have any comments about that? Um, so regarding this matter, that you know, is a very uh, stern criticism of myself and I don't per se take it personal. Nam, but uh, I believe that you know we function based upon principles. Nam, so if the person believe that in his opinion that I made an error as I said before that these matters I myself with the masjid are in the other we have consulted many mashaykh or we have consulted the mashaykh regarding this matter that are these matters to be discussed in the manner that some people prefer 
and which is not to be discussed in a way just to in, is a form to entertain people. The outer self is not about entertainment. It's about looking concerning way out concerning the masala, well mafasid regarding certain matters. So those mashaykh who we advise thought that it was more uh, suitable that we are not too, I would say not busy, the general shabab regarding these matters. And based upon showing the example and the track would have been set. So I said if al Nahmami believe that no, I misguided people, it's a very stern statement that I mis misguided the people. Then you're saying many of themselves, so we ask you regarding this misguiding by not giving in our clarity regarding these individuals. I put these questions to you, Lahmami. And I want for you to answer them. If I misguide the people by not discussing these things in the manner that you wish, I ask you, what can you clarify to me and shed some light regarding the following Mashaykh in the sense of can we take from them or not take from them? One, Sheikh Wasi Allah Abbas. Two, Sheikh Abdul Karim Al Khudir. Three, Sheikh Abdul Aziz Al Rajihi. Four, Sheikh Abdul Rahman Barak. Five, Sheikh Saleh Suhaimi. Six, Sheikh Saleh Suhaimi. Seven, Sheikh Muhammad Bazmul. Eight, Sheikh uh, Ahmed Bazmul. Nine, Sheikh Usama Ataya Utaybi. Ten, Sheikh Saleh Al Sindi. Eleven, Sheikh Saleh Usaymi. Twelve, Sheikh Salim Tawil. Thirteen, Sheikh Fala Ismail. Also, we add to it Sheikh Muhammad Al Imam Al Yemeni. Added to this, Sheikh Muhammad Ali Firqos. Clarify to us regarding this individual. How can we benefit from them or not? Are you remaining silent regarding these individuals? That there's things to be clarified that you have yet to clarify? Elaborate. Question number five, which is that Lahmami accused you of not accepting the criticisms, the jar, upon individuals if all of except if all of the scholars have united or all of the scholars come to an ijma. Is this accusation correct? And for this uh, accusation, I would say no, that uh, Dawud al Salafiya is based upon concern that you know an individual must be even if we criticize others. We have to have as uh, now we do it with you know with uh, a sense of being fair and just. So I say to Lahmami that this false accusation, I ask you to bring statement of myself where I've said I follow this principle. You need to bring and to produce the proof of what you say. As Allah Subhanahu wa says, Atu Burhanukum in Kuntum Sadiqeen. And as the Prophet said that he cautioned, he said, Iyakum wal kathib. Fa inna al kathib yahdi ila al fujur. Wa inna al fujur yahdi ila al jahannam. Aw ila al nar. Aw kama qala isa salam. So I'm saying to you, Lahmami, are we going to go to lie upon others to prove a point? Bring the proof. If you bring the proof and you're correct, then Omar Jamaiki will stand correct. And I'll correct this openly and publicly. Just as if you are unable to bring that proof, and I'm going to challenge you, and I want for you to produce that proof by the 20th of October 2015. The 20th of October 2015. Bring me your proof. If not, I'll expect you to make open, do what is right, which is to make apology to myself. And if not, then we'll settle the matter between us and you in this dunya wal yawm al qiyamah. Because I will make dua for you. So question number six. Did the administration of Brixton Masjid get invited to a meeting with Sheikh Ubaid al Jabari and not turn up? No, is this of the thing that he claimed? This is of the claims that uh, Lahmami put forth in his audio, in his lecture of late, that 
Brixton Masjid were invited to a, a meeting in Medina and they didn't turn up. And so the, as for this, is the first time hearing of this meeting. So maybe it was something else, but it's the first time. It's news, as I said, it's news to me. I've never heard of this meeting before, so I'll challenge uh, Lahmami to one, tell us who were the people who were actually invited and give us their names. When was this meeting? What year did this meeting supposed to have occurred? And also, what were the matters to be discussed? And again, we wait until, so we are waiting for you to give us, for you to clarify to us this information. So, the people who were mentioned, then we'll also try to contact them to verify what you claim. Question number seven. Lahmami raised the issue of Sheikh Fawzan, <coughs> Hafidullah, criticizing Sheikh Ali, Sheikh Ali Hassan, Hafidullah, on the issue of Iman. Are there any other Mashaykh from Ahlul Sunnah, or those who take the same position as Sheikh Ali, who have supported him on this issue of Iman? Regarding this matter pertaining to uh, the criticism, by Sheikh Fawzan Hafidullah to Sheikh Ali regarding matters concerning Iman. And I think he meant uh, the matter concerning not per se Sheikh Fawzan, per se himself, independently. But what have occurred from what I think he's speaking of is uh, the year, I think, uh, 2000, around that time, that there was a fatwa from the legend of Dahima that have then consist of, uh, that was signed off by Sheikh Fawzan uh, the present Mufti, Sheikh Abdul Aziz, Ali Sheikh, also Sheikh Gudayan, uh, and also Sheikh Bakr Abu Zaid, Rahimahullah. Regarding concerning that, they criticize or critique Ali regarding particular matters. Uh, but, uh, and relating, and uh, so that was maybe, th I think, the matter that he's speaking of. Unless there's something of re more recent or new that uh, he may best be the one to explain. But if that's concerned, that matter concerning the matter concerning the matter concerning the legend, that uh, that matter, yes, regarding the matter that you know, I'm not sure that you know if Lahmami is aware of this, right? But you can always check this out in the internet that uh, Mashiach of Medina did support Sheikh Ali against the legend. They were more inclined to the, uh, or they didn't support the legend regarding what they mentioned regarding Sheikh Ali and the, uh, and the, uh, and the, the rule that they passed upon or the accusation they passed upon him. Right? Uh, regarding matters concerning Irja. So you find the likes of Sheikh, Ube Sheikh Ubaid al-Jabir was very supportive and you can still find it on the internet where he mentioned concerning and he mentioned from what I can recall that he praised Sheikh Ali of being of, you know, a person of the Sunnah and upon the uh, correct Aqidah and of those who are, you know, related or a student of Sheikh Albani. Then he went on to mention the next point concerning, you know, that uh, uh, the Mashiach uh, Mash from the Lent Dahima that you know that there is you know that there are our Mashiach and he's you know he loved them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and also he doesn't per se uh, agree with anyone trying to belittle them or to speak ill of them but also then he mentioned that uh, those Mashiach yes they are our we love them and they are dear to us but also they are Bashar and they Yukti wa Yusib and sometimes they may make errors and sometimes they may be correct in certain matters and then he mentioned, and then he can somewhat that, as for himself, may not per se align to the position taken by the, the legend. And this shows again, as I just a point, going back to what was mentioned before, that sometimes the caliber of those Mashiach, of the legend, but the likes of Sheikh Obeid disagreed with their position. And he still did it in a very a way concerning, you know, a noble way of respect and honor. So surely we're not binding, we're not binded, to follow the view of even the Mashiach who are respected on certain matters if one do not find that their evidence may be that uh, strong or you might have reason not to take to it but based upon Sharia reason, based upon Delhi, not based upon Hawa, not based upon Ta'asub and that's of the disease that we have found today with some of the Shabab. So this sometime I said I'm, I'm somewhat also surprised and amazed by Lahmami that something that is used against Sheikh Ali, 
that majority of the Salafi during that time and even those in the West were very supportive of Sheikh Ali on that matter. And I can draw concern in what I can recall that even an individual from amongst the so called Duat in the West, in England in, to be more precise, that he wrote and spread a paper that was called the Halabi Papers. And as an individual, that time I'm not sure the person even to speak Arabic properly. But he wrote a document in defense of Sheikh Ali al Hassan that he referred to him as Al Allama al Muhaddis and all those grand titles. A time that Bricks and Masjid, and that was after them said they were doing this time, so this sense uh, that he was very supportive of Bricks and Masjid. Or, sorry, he was supportive of Sheikh Ali. Against the Lejna. Not only that, it was written in challenging Lejna, that of the wording of which is, we are waiting for you to come back, mean the Lejna, you to come back the Lejna from your mistake or your error. Look what it was said by Sheikh Ubaid al-Jabiri, Allah, showing adab and respect. Even you may not agree with a particular view of some of the Mashaykh. Look at the other response of the Shab. Challenging the legend saying that we are waiting for you to return. Mananta, who are you? And that legend consists of, we mentioned, Sheikh Fawzan, Abdul Aziz Ali Sheikh, Sheikh Bakr Abu Zaid, Sheikh Gudayan. Those are the people who issued that fatwa. And this is the way that you speak and address the Mashaykh of the Sunnah. And the person track record have always been like this. Question number eight is that although the accusation of Brixton being to ask, having to ask towards Jordanians and having a partisanship or his beer amongst them, do you and thank you very much for clarifying that to this point so far. Do you see that this is almost a trend amongst some of the youth and even the, the duat from the West of having partisanship? or extreme taklid or a sense of a sense of um ta'asub towards particular mashaykh have you noticed that over your time given uh dawah in the west i said the regardless that is something that's a valid question and something that's uh, something that uh, most of the those who are involved in dawah and more so concerning the people who affiliate to dawah to salafia and not to the people of the sunnah that's a trend, yes, that uh, I've manifest to the extent you find many of the ulama that uh, they have spoken against this matter and kind of somewhat try to uh, direct the youths away from this. And this is a disease that have come amongst us, even amongst those who are said to be people of Sunnah, where people or particular groups have uh, aligned themselves to a restricted amount of the ulama. And with this also, you can somewhat have uh, isolate yourself from others and whatever and you even to the extent you will test others based upon their acceptance of everything said by those particular Mashiach and yes that is there so we caution ourselves and also others that to be mindful of this and this is also uh, this hulu of manifest and it manifests in state of taqlid towards particular mashaykh over others where everyone must take from those particular ones regarding whatever they put forward and if you do not take from them then you see then your salafia becomes questionable and that's a problem these have never been part of Dawti salafia not of old and should never be taken as such by those who wish to propagate this. This is not, this is not Salafia. This is the Hizbiyah that the ulama have, have written about and warned against. And Shaykh al-Bani rahimahullah in his book, Sibat salat the, Prophet, uh, the Prophet's prayer described, in the introduction, he clarified this matter. And this regarding Abu Anifa, Malik, Shafi, Ahmed. 
not to make that ta'asub and that taqlid of them to the extent that you only restrict yourself to one alim or to two alim or to three alim and that's it and isolate yourself from the others that's not salafiyah and that should not be accepted from no one so we caution ourselves and all who are involved in the dawah to whatever extent that for those of us in the west that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may have given the opportunity to be to some degree involved in the dawah that we should try to do this as well in a way which is concerning showing hikmah showing respect for the ulama in general of the sunnah and of the ulama that are known to be up upon salafiyah show respect and take on a board their advice but to become muta'asib towards particular mashaykh where the only name that you mention night and day are the same names over and over again the only people that you accept to be people that you can take from only the ones that those particular ones give their approval of anyone that they hold to be off you take them off you say that they are off without even knowing the reason is this salafia so we caution ourselves and all so to be mindful of this this poison this disease that has creeped up amongst some of those who affiliate to salafia so we ask of those more so the duat to read the books of the likes of the book of a recent book written by Sheikh Saleh Suhaimi that's titled uh, Tambi Zawatul Afam we cover some of these matters that we are facing even more so in the West also we ask the people to read the book of Sheikh uh, Bakr Abu Zaid Hukm Intima Ila Al Farq Wal Jamaat that concerning uh, so read of those books Read the book Rifq Ayl Sunnah Bi Ayl Sunnah of Shaykh Muhsin Abad. Read of these books so we can benefit ourselves and others and not take people down that dark path of taqlid wa ta'asub al ama. This is not from Salafiyyah. Obilai Tawfiq wa Adil As Sabil. Jazakallah Khair. So, in closing, do you have a summarized response to the individual Lahmami who chose to come to South London and raise these issues amongst the Shabab? Now, in summary, regarding uh, Lahmami, what he has said, we asked these questions to Lahmami. Lahmami, do you hold and see bricks and message to be from Ali Bida? Do you hold bricks and message to be Ghadr Salafi? Lahmami, we ask of you that the thing that you have put for some of those things are very questionable you have accused us that we have come with some false principle regarding that we do not accept a jar unless there's an ijma that principle is false it's a ridiculous principle you accuse us that we make taqlid or that we all our fears goes back to particular mashaykh bring your proof for this And when you speak, try to be, at least give people a fair criticism. You didn't bring anything direct that Omar Jamaica said such and such and such, bricks and massive have done such and such. You have bring a few things scattered, but nothing directly that Omar Jamaica said such. Bricks and massive did such and such. And it shows the weakness of these criticism and attack upon Brixton. Have you ever once extended? You said you have you came you used to go Khub and Brixton Masjid a while back. Have you ever once tried to extend, trying to come to me directly or of the man to discuss some of these matters? But rather you chose to do it publicly to 
do what? To defame us? To ridicule us? To put a bad repeat to uh, to poison the effort of the masjid? Usik bitaqwa Allah. Usik bitaqwa Allah. Wa kulu kaulan sadida. Wa la akhru da'wana alhamdulillah ameen. Wa bilahi tawfiq. Wa adil al-sabil. فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدِ اهْتَدَوْا وَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنَّمَا هُمْ فِي شِقَاقٍ